Inner Voice, a heartfelt chat with Dr. Fujian. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Inner Voice podcast. It is so great to be with you today. I'm Fujian Zain. I'm a psychotherapist and author and the originator of the awareness integration theory. A conversation is about what matters most in our life. Our mind, our thoughts, feelings, actions, relationship, and our fulfillment in this beautiful journey of life. A couple of announcements, everyone, for all psychotherapists, mental health practitioners, and life coaches. The Essentials of the Awareness Integration Theory course is coming up. It's coming up in uh, June 24th to 26th three days, 18 hours. Um, I'm going to share with you all of the theoretical principles of the awareness integration theory and the six phases of the um, interventions. And um, the early bird is going to be ending in June 10th. Sign up really quick because the uh, availability is is, kind of not that big we're going to do it online so we um, need you to if you're interested to sign up as soon as possible it's going to be about hundred dollar less uh, if you sign up before the early bird so um just wanted to share that part with you uh, i'd love to have you there i'd love to share all of those with you so let me know either email me at awareness integration institute um, at gmail.com or fujanzain at gmail.com or you can just go to my website And today I chat with Carrie Leaf. She's currently a practicing licensed marriage and family psychotherapist, holistic mindset coach, and a hypnotherapist. Carrie has worked in the field of psychology in a wide variety of settings, which include hospitals, community mental health, youth residential homes, substance abuse, military base, college university, and private practice. She's worked with a wide variety of clients from all ages, and around many different identified problems for more than 15 years. She is the author of the book, Therapize Yourself, and that's the book we're going to talk about today, and many, many other aspects. We're going to talk about trauma and eye movement desensitization and processing, how do you reflect upon yourself, and so much much more conversation. I'm sure you're going to enjoy it as much as I did. Subscribe to this podcast, my YouTube channel, and connect with me through my website, fujanzain.com, or any of the other social media. I love to hear from you. I love to get your comments and topics you want me to talk about, and just connect with me. So here it is. Well, here we are with Carrie Leaf, a psychotherapist, a hypnotherapist, and um, and a mindset coach. So, hello and welcome to the show. Hi, thanks so much for having me. Of course. Now, you have a book out which is called "Therapize Yourself." I love the title, "Therapize Yourself," and um, I went over your book, and it, it really gives this. Um, easy, uh, smooth, and simple way for people to just go through their own process. I'm not saying easy for the people who are going through their process, that the process is, the inner process is going to be easy, but you have done a beautiful job of easing people through the path. And, um, you know, with a little bit of twinge of humor and a very kind of like this, um, easy conversation as if they're sitting in our office you know it's like the you know therapist and the client are sitting in our office and we're like uh chatting in in a non-formal way but it's uh it's a um, a lot of great deep work that you've done so great job thank you so much and and i'd love to hear your feedback because i mean that that's exactly what i was going for exactly so that's so great to hear that because the the process of jumping into healing or therapy or coaching can be scary and daunting and overwhelming and just getting started is a lot of times one of the hardest parts. So I I certainly wanted it to be that soft, gentle easing. This is what you can expect. Come on, let's do it. You know, it'll pay off kind of thing. Yes, it does. I mean, the book starts with what is 
looking at what is my problem and then allowing you to kind of go over, check it out. And then you also put them through different scanning of different their areas of, you know, finances, relationship, networks, body, and all of that. Um, and you ease people through this process where they can really um, kind of self reflect in the areas that are there. And uh, one of the um, also interesting areas, things that I saw in your book was that when they're finding, you know, people are finding their belief systems and what's going on and how come in some areas of their life, something is not going and they go through a, a belief system. And then, you know, you guide them to see where the causality of some of these, where did they get it? What, if, you know, what age they were, what circumstances they were. Um, and um, you kind of like ease through uh, this process of self-help. Um, um, and I was wondering what you uh, received from the um, from people who read it and did the work. Yeah, a lot was very in line with exactly what you said. The same, the same kind of response of like it didn't seem so heavy. You know, it was a, a gentle easing, and so I was able to walk through the process. Um, you know, one of my clients that read the book that I've seen for years, I got some interesting feedback from her because we have, um, we've done all this, we've done all this in session and she, she gave me the feedback that it was really great to go through it again. Cause we're, we're in a totally different place in our sessions now. And it was really great to go through it again, you know, a few years later and see where I am now versus where I was when I started with you and kind of compare and contrast and, and have gratitude and then see the other areas that I might need to start digging in on. And that again, was exactly what I was looking for of this can be a self-assessment yearly, every other year, every six months, however often you feel like I am just off. I'm, I'm not myself. I'm not my best version. I'm, I'm not on track and you can pick it up and you can self-assess again and see where you're at, at the most recent point in life that you are. Exactly. You also um, share in the book that you took EMDR training and even at the end, uh, um, at one point of the book, you offer and, and um, kind of suggest uh, that if someone is caught in some trauma, there's something that is holding and they, through the, just the simple processes cannot let go to um, go back into um, finding a therapist who uh, offers EMDR. Do you want to share a little bit about that? Yes. Uh, EMDR, it's, I've just, it's been fascinating since I've been trained. I've gone through it myself as a client. I use it all day, every day as a therapist. Um, it's powerful. It's, it's not your typical uh, talk-based therapy. It's, it's structured. It's got a, this agenda, all the steps, you know, that I start walking through in the book. Of course, I can't go all the way through in the book, but um, I've never seen such powerful progress and results in such a short amount of time in any other therapeutic approach. And in, in my, you know, I'm, I've been doing, and I'm in this field for a decade and a half. Um, and I've just never seen anything come as close to it to get the progress and the, the powerful results. It really, you know, changed my life. It, it's changed my practice and it's definitely central to my work and my passion. So for uh, people who might not necessarily know what we're talking about, if you can open it up, it's called um, Eye Movement Desensitization and Reprocessing. It was created and originated by Dr. Francine Shapiro, which is no longer with us. And I do agree. I've uh, been uh, an EMDR practitioner for almost 20 years now. And um, it's, I've seen, I sometimes call it a magical technique. And I've seen, def uh, especially for major, major traumas, um, you know, I've definitely utilized that. I took actually some parts of it and I created a different psychology model, awareness integration. And I incorporated some of the ideas in the way that it worked with trauma in there. So it is a very, very, um, you know, skillful uh, approach in creating and releasing traumas. And I, and, and it was interesting to see it in your book to see how uh, you, you have also incorporated in your practice and utilizing it all the time. Yes, exactly. And I don't know how much detail you want me to go into, but in the book, I list the basics and, and kind of that step one of identifying what's the problem. Step two, what's my negative belief around it and how do I want to 
reprocess, rewire that to a healthier, positive belief. Um, step three, going through that timeline, like you said, where did this develop and where did it snowball and, and get ingrained and, and who I am? Um, and then reprocessing, let the, letting the brain take over the reprocessing part is, is just mind blowing. Like you said, magical. It does feel like magic and clients will come back to me, you know, a week later, or a few weeks later and be like, I don't know how this happened, but this happened. And, and it does feel like magic in that sense. Um, but the reprocessing, letting the brain take over and heal itself and rewire those belief systems, um, that is a very watered down, you know, summary of EMDR, short and condensed summary of EMDR. Um, and I think a lot of people, if they look into it, a question I get a lot of times is, um, well, I don't have any trauma per se, and I use EMDR for everything. And, you know, we're looking at big T's and little or big T's and little T traumas. Um, so kind of take the word trauma with a grain of salt and trauma can be in the eye of the beholder. But, um, you know, I use it for anxiety, depression, relationship issues, career issues all across the board. It doesn't have to be what a lot of us think of as like a major traumatic event. We can still get a lot of benefits from it. Absolutely. So when you talk about also being a hypnotherapist, I've done hypnotherapy for many, many years and holistic mind coach, can you share uh, how you bring this uh, essence of the psychotherapy, the evidence-based psychotherapeutic concepts, and then bringing the holistic mindset and mindfulness and hypnotherapy? How do you kind of uh, bring these approaches uh, to heal people in your work? Yeah, so you know, a lot of my work, it's all intersecting to working with the subconscious, right? So EMDR, hypnotherapy, um, even, you know, looking at on, on some degree CBT and, and then working as a mindset coach and mind, you know, there's not much difference that I'm, I'm doing with that than um, the psychotherapy, but there's differences in coaching versus psychotherapy. But when we're working on the mindset, I'm still, I'm still trying to understand what are the belief systems um, in the subconscious. Um, so, you know, those three things are all inner, inner lapping, overlapping and interweaving around bringing the subconscious train of thought to the conscious mind, you know, so that's the biggest um, part that I really like to jump into and work with my clients. But that is after I like to get that solid wellness foundation in general. And that's why I say take a very strong holistic approach, looking at mind, body and spirit or soul or however you want to term that one. But I want to make sure that um our body is functioning our best. There's a lot of times that we can have what appear to be mental health symptoms, but really it's something going on physically that's, you know, bubbling up and, and presenting as a mental health symptom or looks like that. Um, it could be a, a food sensitivity. It could be gut health. It could be the fact that we're eating fast food every day or, you know, drugs or alcohol or just all the things. And, and we're not exercising and we're getting two hours of sleep, all these things that, that are going to appear, you know, and result in mental health symptoms. But if we would, we would focus on the body and we would integrate that and we would get that solid foundation there. A lot of those are going to decrease. And then we have a better idea of what we're working with when we deep dive into that subconscious train of thought but if we have some things going on physically that we're not taking care of and getting a good solid foundation there it's going to get in the way of diving taking that deeper dive because we're going to be dealing with every day kind of like i'm tired i'm i'm sick i'm not well i'm stressed i'm irritable i'm fighting with somebody we're not going to get that you know not that life is ever perfectly smooth, but we'll always be attending to present day and putting out current present day fires if we don't integrate mind, body, spirit and look at each area to get that general wellness foundation. And when you're uh, talking about more of the epigenic where you're looking at all the other aspects that is happening in the environment of the person and, and what's happening with their body, I'm hearing you say, that when we're working with the uh, with someone or all of the people who are listening to us, 
um, when they're looking at their own um, essence, there's a component of the psychological aspect, but there's also all of these other components that are attaching and they're like a network together. And uh, part of the assessment is to look at all of these different areas because when um, you know, they're intertwined, so when one doesn't work, it affects the other. Uh, when my body doesn't work, you know, it affects my mind. When my mind doesn't work, it affects my body. When, you know, my behaviors and the surrounding that don't work, it affects my mood and, you know, how I'm going to deal with it. So it's this kind of an assessment of looking at the whole surrounding and seeing how I can create a balance, not only with myself and my, my body, but also to create a balance in, in, in the, uh, of, of my body and the surrounding world in a, as much as I can. Um, in order to have a healthier life. Right, exactly, exactly all of that. Um, that balance is that key word. And while that's a never ending, you know, goal, we're never going to be perfectly balanced ever. But the more we can strive for that balance and in, in integrating all areas, the better we're going to be doing. Um, yeah, it, it's, it's also the idea that Sometimes we're going to be better in one area than the other, depending on what life is throwing at us. But if we can make sure that we're checking in with all of those areas um, and, and we're, we're not letting any slip for any too long amount of time, we're going to be better when life throws us those curveballs. Um, so the same idea of like, developing coping skills and self-care around each of these areas do we have our routines do we have our go-tos you know for our body for our moods for our spirituality our faith our religion whatever that may be do we know ourselves in that way to be able to create the best balance and of course part of knowing yourself like you said that you know the epigenetics is, is part of it's it's nature and nurture right so some is knowing how we grew up and how we became who we are and, and bringing those subconscious thoughts to the conscious mind. And then some of it is, is knowing our, our genetics, you know, am I, am I biologically prone from mom and dad and, and so on forth back to certain things, you know, where is, where do I start out on this level of heading towards, you know, um, obesity or addiction or anxiety or how close am I to that threshold as opposed to where someone else might start off right so it's knowing all of those bits and pieces of yourself and that's a journey to to learn yourself right but the better you get to know yourself the better you can respond to what life throws at you absolutely some of the um, interesting factor what I've also seen is when you talk about getting for people to get to know themselves the first thing is I know myself, I, this is who I am, it is what it is, and um, uh, you know, um, uh, it's not gonna change or I'm not gonna change. And there's a, there's a limit, limiting self and uh, kind of holding themselves in a, in a particular space um, of not necessarily opening into looking at the wide variety of information that is inside and it's not as, uh, let's say the simple factor of what shows up in your consciousness there is a lot of subconscious matters that are still part of you but they're operating in the background which you're not really aware of they do show up in your behavior and your results but you're not necessarily are sure because maybe you're holding um you know a certain belief system and a value that is you're doing something and then suddenly you have different results and you're like what happened how come um, you know, although I wanted this, that another result is coming up for me, such as, you know, I'm sure everybody has experienced the, you know, uh, with people having their weights going up and down or behaviors where they promise themselves I'm not going to do and they still do, or um, any of, you know, the rebelliousness that they have against their own self in a sense. So they could watch those parts um, and the dualities keep showing up for them. And knowing that one part might be conscious and another part that is still pretty much active um, and, and doing their work and creating the results for us. So this concept of interception, reflection, um, and allowing, kind of getting hmm, excited about getting to know yourself, I think it's a beautiful path to take. And your book, Therapize Yourself, allows someone to kind of go through the path of, and, and start the reflection with themselves. Yes, thank you. And I think you make a, a good point in that 
even when we become aware of something, you know, consciously, we bring that to the, the conscious mind and, and we have that insight that does not automatically change behavior. Insight doesn't mean behavior change. Um, you know, we can behaviorally work hard at it and develop new habits, but that's where the mindset piece comes in. We've got to rewire that thought process. So I hope that you know, in the book and in general, I encourage people to give themselves grace and, and know that this is difficult um, because I could know like, oh, I keep doing that thing that isn't healthy for me. And I'm, I better stop that only to find myself a week later, six months later, a year later, still doing it, right? <laughs> because of that, that the concept of homeostasis and familiarity and what's comfortable and what we know and habit and routine just because we are aware and the insight is there does not mean it is easy to make those changes and those shifts. It is hard work. I feel like, you know, sometimes we talk about it of like, just become aware and understand and know what you're doing, bring that subconscious conscious and then poof, it's magic. You'll be doing better. It is not that easy. You know, um, some things are, you know, easier than others, but generally we're really digging in, delving in, doing some hard uncomfortable work facing the the shadow parts of ourselves the parts that we don't like and we don't like to acknowledge and and face and deal with so um it is hard work and it takes time and part of the duality that we were talking about is that sometimes you see something about, about yourself and you think this is the way it is but then you see that the result is different you know, working with people who they consistently talk about, I want to create, for example, a financial management that is appropriate. But then month after month, a year after a year, the financial management does not get created. And although they say and they have the skills, they don't implement it. But they're not necessarily looking at the part of themselves that is not willing to implement it, although another part is. So the justification is always, well, I'm doing, I know it, I'm trying, I'm doing it but then not taking responsibility for the other part of you that doesn't want to do it and it's not doing it. <laughs> I think those are Paul, yes. one of those dualities that, you know, it's important to become aware of and then, you know, work through versus consistently creating justifications for ourselves, which we're not going to create the result. And again, uh, you've created the path of opening and reflection um, in, in the way that you've set up your book. Yes. And, you know, I, I don't recall who said this to me, honestly, um, but I remember trying, and I don't, I don't even actually recall the issue that I was trying to change, but the, this one piece stood out to me. Um, I was trying to work on something, <laughs> trying to change something. And someone at one point said, well, you must not want it bad enough. And in the moment that really irritated me, that really upset me because I had been agonizing, obsessing, mad at myself, frustrated with myself. Why can't I change this? Why can't I do this? Um, and then at some point it clicked exactly what you were talking about. I am looking at every single area about my life, talking about it, thinking about it, trying this and trying that, except for the area that I don't want to face, you know, the area that I'm like, mm, I'd rather not go there. I'm going to try to side skirt it. I'm going to try to, I don't want to see that part of myself. I'm going to try to get around it. And then it clicked of like, oh yeah, I guess if I want it bad enough, I'll dig into that, that uncomfortable area. And so that it made sense that I guess I didn't want it bad enough at the time because I was trying to cheat my way. I was trying to cheat my way to results. And like I said, it irritated me in the moment, but I, in hindsight, I understood it. And if we really want something really, truly, it's got to be, you know, central to our focus. And we've got to be um, basically willing to get our hands dirty and dig in. And sometimes a part of me knows that it wants this bad enough, but another part wants something else bad enough. Mm -hmm. so, <laughs> they kind of, uh, one trumps the other one. <laughs> yes work with a lot of people who their comfort uh, underneath it all and the wanting comfort bad enough takes away from all the other parts that they say I want the results bad enough you know or and any of those which is just looking so bottom line is the essence of the reflection and allowing yourself to go in to get to know these parts because if you don't get to know them 
there's no way you're going to be able to do anything about them. So the first thing is the, the uh, ability to be aware and, and getting to know who you are in order to see if you can shift anything. Yes. And I, I think the, the language of parts and, and family internal systems, like it, that does help, that does help us to say, yes, there's many multiple parts of me and who I am. It's not black and white, all or nothing. And, and I think that is a, it's a nice, um, way to acknowledge all the parts of ourselves and bring them forward. And I think that's definitely helpful. Um, as we're getting close to the end, is there anything that we haven't touched upon, Carrie, that uh, you really want our audience to know about um, your work, about EMDR, about um, your book, and um, anything about the world of psychotherapy or hypnotherapy? You know, I think we touched upon a lot of it. Um, a, a big thing that I like to encourage people, because like I said, you know, it is it is difficult to just get started. It is difficult to face ourselves and our stuff because often we've been avoiding it for a very long time. Um, and so I really like to just to spread the message um, of encouraging people to just start, start somewhere, take the baby steps, know that this is a journey. This isn't an overnight thing, but the journey pays off, um, delayed gratification and that every little baby step is a win. It's a big win to celebrate those little baby steps. But along the way, I would say one of the most important things in this journey, in this process is having grace and kindness for yourself and flexibility um, in your thinking. But that grace for yourself and that kindness for yourself is, is, a, is a big deal. So celebrate those little wins, you know, whether it's just tomorrow I got up out of bed or, um, you know, the next day I walked 10 minutes or, um, you know, that I booked that session, whatever it is, just giving yourself grace and kindness along the way. Beautifully said. Carrie Leaf, everyone, go to carrieleaf.com to get to know her more and see how you can work with her. Also to get your her book, Therapize Yourself. So thank you so much for spending the time with me. Thank you so much for having me. My honor. And for all of you who are out there, create an amazing world for yourself and everyone around you. And until next week, bye-bye.